Suspense. For Suspense tonight, CBS presents Till Death Do Us Part by John Dixon Carr, starring Peter Lorre. Late one night in December of 1941, a man and his wife sat beside the fire in their country cottage. This man, look at him. A professor of mathematics, stout, middle-aged, guileless as a child. <laughs> in the remote corner of England where he lives with his pretty English wife, they say of him... Jolly decent fellow, you know, for a farmer. Isn't he? Always a smile for everybody and so polite. That's why it's such a shame about his wife and that young American. There hasn't been anything between them yet, I'm almost sure. But if the American stays here much longer... Shh, I tell you. A happy man, this Professor Kraft. His cottage in the country is rather isolated. Three miles from the nearest house. No electricity or central heating or telephone. And on December nights like this, a great wind comes rushing off the Sussex Downs. It rattles at the windows, growls in the chimney, and makes unsteady the oil lamp on the table. Professor Irwin Kraft sits before the fire in a snug book-lined room. And across from him, sewing, sits his young wife, Cynthia. A domestic scene. A very domestic scene. Oh, my pet, this is wonderful, isn't it? Oh, so nice and cozy. <laughs> ah, how I enjoy our little home. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be indoors on a night like this, isn't it? <laughs> Did my darling have a good day? Just about as usual. No adventures, huh? Not exactly. I walked into the village. Walked? Oh, I really blame myself for burying you out here. I ought to get your car. That's not necessary, thanks. Come now, come. Did something happen to upset my little pet today? No, no, no. You know, darling, I look at you and I marvel. You marvel at what? At a wife who can actually blush. Yes. With a skin so fair and a conscience so transparent that she can actually blush. I wasn't blushing about... About what? About anything you might be thinking. <laughs> <laughs> it's your horrible habit of putting everybody else in the wrong. Oh, but the neighbors don't think that about Papa Croft. The neighbors don't have to live with you. I do. And you mustn't scratch either. Not when we are so snug here, so cozy, and a kettle on a fire is nearly boiling, and the rum is ready, and the lemon juice, and the sugar for her medicine. Oh, and must I drink that stuff? I don't like rum. But you have a cold, darling. I haven't got a cold. Really, I haven't. Now, darling, twice today I heard you cough. Uh, you are going to take your medicine, thank you, and take it here and now, and not offend your clumsy old husband by refusing. Why do you keep on treating me like a girl of 16? I love to treat you like that, Cynthia, because, uh, because I cannot fathom your thoughts. You lock up your thoughts. And that is a dangerous English habit. You see, thoughts accumulate and won't be stifled. And sooner or later, when you least expect it... Well, look out. The kettle's boiling over. So it is. Oh, and please, lift it down from there. Of course, of course. I apologize. I apologize, my darling. There. For a second, you know, you almost frightened me. Huh? <laughs> I frightened you? I suppose it's foolish. Well, here we are, my dear. Here we are. Now, see, I put two tumblers on the coffee table. And now, a spoon in each so that the heat doesn't crack them. Oh, dear, must you give me so much rum? Can't I have a small one? But we have to cure that cold of yours, Cynthia. 
Now comes the lemon juice. Yes. And now comes hot water to the clock. <laughs> Here we are. And two lumps of sugar for each of us. There you are, darling. Now let's drink up, huh? Ellen. Listen. I didn't hear anything. I did. It it came from that cupboard over there. It sounded like your recording. Oh, that's nonsense, darling. That's nonsense. There. There it is again. Well, that's only the wind. Or or perhaps a rat that got into the cupboard. Irwin, I'm terrified of rats. Go and kill it. Would you mind? Oh, you really sit very heavy labors, my sweet, for one of my ways. Well, well, if you insist, all right, all right. Well, I'll take a good heavy poker from the fireplace. And, of course, it means a little trip through the cupboard. Irwin, uh, never mind. You haven't changed your mind, have you? It'd probably run out across the floor. Come back. Wouldn't run very far, I'm sure. Well, <laughs> again, if you insist. I can't think what's the matter with me tonight. No? No. You're sure nothing upset you in the village today, huh? Certainly not. How about uh, this young American, that uh, fledgling doctor, what's his name? You mean Dr. Craig? That's it, Dr. Craig. Dr. Craig. Didn't someone say he was leaving today for London and, and then back to the States? I believe so. Uh, that's what Lady Randolph told me. And you didn't say goodbye to him? Certainly not. Well, that wasn't kind of you, darling. That wasn't friendly. What's the matter? Don't you like my nice hot run drink? No. But you'll give me no tea till I do drink it. That's right, darling. That's right. Now, take it down like a good girl. I'm keeping you company. See? Oh, how pretty she looks. With her yellow hair in the firelight. And her red mouth. And the light little hands. Very pretty. Oh, uh, there is just one other thing, Cynthia. I, I gave you a letter to post this afternoon. Did you post it? Yes. Registered? Yes. And uh, did you notice whom the letter was addressed? Everybody notices the address on an envelope. It was to some Mr. Hatterby at Market Shepherd. That's right. But I don't know who he is, if that's what you mean. Oh, Mr. Hatterby is uh, the coroner of this district. The coroner? That's right. That's right. But is there any reason why you should be writing letters to the coroner? Well, <laughs> there will be tomorrow morning. We have been just drinking poison, my love. Why do you drop your glass on me? <laughs> I don't believe you. No? <laughs> uh, this will interest you, Cynthia. You were a trained nurse, and weren't you? Uh... You see, the poison was aconite. Mums you. No. Yes, homegrown in our own little garden. You know, one sixteenth of a grain has been a fatal dose. This is terrible, dear. No car, not even a neighbor. Exactly, my angel. Take your hands off me. Let me get up. No, my Let pet. Me. In about five minutes, you see, the the first symptoms will come on. Symptoms? Yes. Our throats will grow dry. <laughs> our eyesight will turn dim. No. And presently, we'll lose the use of our limbs. Well, there are convulsions before the end, I believe, but he won't feel them. Let me help. If, if you try to hit at me, Angel, you'll upset that lamp. And, well, if you upset the lamp, this cottage would go up like tinder. We don't want to burn to death, do we? Owen, why are you doing this? Why are you doing it? Why? Do you think all Papa Kraft is blind, my pet? Huh? If I can't have you, Cynthia, nobody else is going to have you. You mean Jim Craig? Huh. So it is Jim Craig. Oh, that was nothing. My tongue slipped. 